Yahweh, we magnify. Magnify Yahweh, we exalt you. Magnify Yahweh, I have you. Yah is worthy of our praise. Lord, we magnify you. Magnify Yahweh, we magnify. Magnify Yahweh, we exalt you. Magnify Yahweh, I have you. Yah is worthy of our praise. Shabbat Shalom Nation. The first day of the week, but I'm headed out. I, I want to show us uh, the properties of Teshua. So I'm headed out. Turn the light off in my little small office. Headed outside here. Most of the people around here on the first day, they tend to sleep a little late. But I've been up since 3.30 this morning. Up. Ready to go, I will feed the fish and give you a view of how things are progressing. House, I'm ready to begin to plant. This is the garden. Tomatoes, they're beautiful. They just haven't turned green or red yet. We're gonna fertilize everything today, the garden. But they're luscious and pretty. You got out Zachim Bidamine and Akio safe, working on things, and we're getting it done. Hallelujah. Yabaruk, Yabaruk. Zakim Birmin. Yes, sir. Yabaruk, Yosef, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Listen, I'm going to run down to, on the other side of the property, all right? I'm going to drive down. I'll be back, so I'm headed out of the gate. All right. Yes, sir. Shalom, yeah. Doing a video this morning just to show you the beauty. Beauty of the nation. Where we live, how we live. The gardens are well today, this time of the year. I trellis up all these tomatoes here. And the squash are not plant to really grow. Squash, zucchinis and things during the summer here. I need to wait until the fall to grow that. And I'll grow some more, but everything is beautiful. Uh, growing well. Looking well. Need to prune things up. Tomatoes, as I said, these are some jumbo tomatoes, are they not? What are these? These are the pineapple tomatoes. Kale and everything. There are those that have said, well, do you, uh, can I buy food? Well, if you were near us, I would give you. This is so perishable. Look at all those, look at all that. We can't eat all this. But I am one that I believe in doing things abundantly. As I said, this is what, anyone trying to grow things, this is, um, it brings in the bees, we have bees, but, but this is clover here. Deal in here. And then we have ladybugs. You see that? You hear the bees? I wanted to do a video on just the sounds that we have here. I've been up since 3.30, I was out. And I want you to hear the beautiful sounds here in the country, in the woods here. This is how we look. Look at those tomatoes, no rotten. What is say shalom, ya baruch, made just a little mistake out here this morning looking at the garden and showing the beauty of how things are going, beautiful tomatoes and all of that, look how fat they are, just haven't turned red, we harvest the onions, 
have an abundance of onions, peppers, and things. Things are growing. Have zucchini, bitumini, Yosef out. Uh, trellis and things because first day is a day that people tend to take care of the business, the husband's working, and all of that. And I'll probably be here by myself today. These are what we call those alpha cucumbers. I've never grown them the first time, and uh, we're going to try them. We're trying them. Different breeds of alpha cucumbers. The peppers and things. Everything's looking well. The garden. Everything. Uh, ran into a spider web there. You're going to have diseases and things, see, the cukes and all that. You're going to have that. You can't prevent totally unless you use a combination of tremendous chemicals. There have been those that said to you, sell stuff. Well, you can't ship, ship these perishable things anywhere. And if you were near us, you certainly would say, come and pick some of these greens. Look at that. Look at it. I'm going to, this morning, visit another part of our properties. Look at that beautiful, isn't that beautiful? That flower is called uh, clover. This is the first day and most other people will be out. I'll stay back. Squash has not done well as I wanted to. Uh, the squash bugs, it's just almost impossible to eradicate them. They come. But it's one thing I've learned from an old Amish book that I bought many years ago. You see that? Those are squash bugs. We'll spray for them today. But it's one thing that I learned years ago. I bought this book of an old... Amish farmer, and I learned that even in the South, for the best time to grow like cucurbit family, it's in the fall. You get better. You don't have the uh, complication of bugs and worms and the kind of blight you have. So I will begin here to grow in the greenhouse ah, soon. I'm without my cane this morning. I take that everywhere I go. But I'm headed to my friends here. Got to finish or two this morning. I'm going to take the truck. I'm not walking that far. All right, watch, watch this. All right, this is the pond. Now watch, I get them all here, watch. Oh, they're here. Look at how they look at them. Look at them. They were small. They're growing now. Look at this. I only feed them. I put enough food in there once a day that they can eat in five minutes. That's all. You can see how clean the rocks and all of the al allergies. They're not on the rocks or anything in the water. You can see the colored stones. So I'll see how long they eat. And I'll feed them for five minutes. See how much they will eat in five minutes. You see most of that is gone. I'm not going to give them no more than they can eat, and that's it for today. You want to do it first thing in the morning, first thing in the morning, or late in the evening. You don't want to feed them when they when it's hot. First thing in the morning, look at them. They're growing. I think I may just get three big ones, large ones, for the pond. That's all I will feed them, period. You should really take out everything that is left, what they don't eat. But I tend not to. I'll leave this. Come on, boys and girls. Come and eat it. Look 
here. Part of life here, for sure. The corn, everything is grown, the buildings are in excellent shape. I'm, we are renovating, we are renovating a, we built a building, it's a fellowship building that we built many years ago. And um, it, changing the interior of it. It's going to be a beautiful building uh, when we finish. I'll keep you posted. This is Imra Fayez. Get us some birds. Get that painted. Get some pigeons or something for this. Something that can endure this cold weather and all of that. That's what we'll do. But this is Teshu. I'm here this morning. I'm going to make a run in the old... Look at this thing. GMC. She gets me up and down the road. I don't like cars. I don't drive cars. Give me a truck. This is our sukkah. We're in the time of Pesach. Uh, tabernacle. We're going to teach on that to show you all the phoniness of what we call this deception of how you keep feast days. It's wrong. It's wrong. But this is where Ima and I, this is our sukkah. I built this out of all, basically everything in this place. And this is a storage building, she store. Look at this, everything in here. <laughs> Little place. I built everything in here. The mirrors were given to me, everything. The headboard, I don't know where I got that from. But they all wood and everything. I, I got this from a pile of wood. I traded off watermelons for it. It's all oak wood. This stuff right here, I just, I think someone dumped it off and I took it. Lanterns and everything. So, my, she got enough tissue and toilet in here. The only thing we're going to be able to do is come in here and sleep. And that's it. It's a beautiful place. It really is. I love the fellowship of this time of the year. The friendship and the bond that we develop. There have been people come here from all over, I'm telling you. And when they meet Uriya, they, we, they tend to say, I don't like him. Hmm? But they would come, if there's anything they cannot say, they cannot say that. They did not entreat us wrong. Plenty of food. And those that were from Jamaica, living in the States. And they would say to me, Riyak, I tell you, that this jerky is better than Jamaica. I cook better jerky than Jamaicans. That's a fact. So let me jump in the old GMC. We're going to head down to the other property. Uh, can we do that? Everyone, I'll show you as we go. Start the old truck up. But this is what I drive. This is what I drive, but... The vehicles here that you see in front. And there are those with them at their homes. But these are for those that anyone needs to go. They drive. Van. That's how we do it. This is Teshua. On a beautiful first day. And I want to go down and just show you some of the properties. It troubles me because the people that say they love Yah, they really don't love each other. I don't know why those that identify as Hebrew Israelites in these large cities don't even pull their resources. If you take every person in that fellowship, you will find out that the rent and the level of the rent they pay is enormous. I don't care if you have to sleep on the floor. I did, I have, in a little small camper. You could take your resources and buy a building, 
or land. It's better to buy land. But you will have that. You can build, train your young men, men to be carpenters and plumbers, to facilitate your vision, train the daughters. There was a piece of land that I wanted to purchase. I, no, I've always had. It was about, that piece of land was about, I would say about a thousand acres. And I would go that way all the time to pick up wooden blocks, fire stones. The man would give them to us free and we would haul them by the tons. Sure. Mm -hmm. We will haul them by the tons. And there was a piece of land. My my desire here was to have enough land. And about a 25-acre pond, all the homes around the pond. Beautiful maintenance in the community that it will look beautiful, whomever you were that come to see it. Let me show you as we travel down your vision. You hear the birds even aside from this old truck? This is our community here. We own on this side to down here as well. We own land on both sides. But get it back there, I wanted to build bakeries. We could do our own organic cookers and we could have market everything. That's what you can do, people. You don't have to be dependent. We take no government money. No, no one that's ever lived here has been on welfare. That's the first thing I thought, take them off, nah. Take them off welfare. And when I was in Charlotte, I would send them to school. The women that were on welfare, no husbands, children. I would send them to the local college. I'd encourage them so that they could get any kind of job. But I'm telling you, I said, you can't get one as a doctor or a nurse. Isn't that beautiful? Nice walk in the morning. No one on our country dirt roads. And then I would promote them. Most of these men today, I'm not going to indict every man, but they're sleeping with the women. They're dogs. They're not even dogs. And the women today are so, they have been so bruised. Many no fathers and things like that. They don't know what a man is. And so they brutalize them, take advantage of them because of their, that's the big pond there. I said to my Isha other day, we were talking, we always talk. I said, Imam, a woman cannot raise a son. She cannot make him a man. Mama, I love you daughters. You don't have that ability. You can raise or teach him in the rearing of him how to love a daughter of Tizayon, what love is. You show that by how you love him. And not only that, but how my friend, how he interacts with his father, whether he's a man that even stays there with you or not, are you married with him? It takes a man to teach a boy the man qualification. Daughters, you can't do it. You make them less than men. They begin to develop your effeminate ways. It takes a man. This is all of our property. I want to show you, all right? I want to show you, this is the land here that I spoke to us concerning. You see how that water is here? You know, all these frogs, this is a, I don't know, look like beavers in here. But this is all of our land. Let me get out. I want to. I think I'll be safe for a minute. This is all of our land right here. It's underwater. 
And if you look back in there, we had those beautiful oak, those beautiful, that was all poplar trees. It's about two acres in. It's, uh, I would say close to five acres under, under water. And uh, this is what it did to our trees. All of this was trees, everything. It's just underwater now. And this creek doesn't belong to us, it is the government, it belongs to the state. And people will come here time back in the days and fish in this creek and catch fish. They will stand on the road, they cannot go on our property. You can't shut that off from anyone. But this is our land, back to those tree lines, that, those green trees. This is our piece of property. And some wealthy Caucasians bought this. And they dammed it up so they can duck hunt and things like that. If you can see, there's a cork right there, a fishing cork hanging on that tree that they fish here. They fish here. Look at the serenity of this road when you travel. It's so beautiful and quiet. It's a beautiful road. I know it's dirt road, but that's all right. We're right here at the highway. Uh, less than a half a mile, quarter of a mile. All right, but this is Teshua. Great community. We gotta go up. Some of you may have seen it, but many may have not. But I keep the camera on this side that you can see. So this is our land here. I wanted to put homes and everything. Gymnasium. We were gonna do it. It's amazing because those that were with me, they're doing their own thing. I don't slight them, but they're not coming here, no person. With any kind of agenda, but the agenda of yeah. God. I let no one come in here. I know this is somewhat boring, but I want you to just see the beauty of our land, all these trees. I'm gonna take you down in some, get to the top of the hill. But all this is our land. I can go in this way. One road that leads all the way around this piece of land. But I prefer going to the top. I'll show you where this began. Where it all began. There was an old house up there. That house, I tell you, is coming down, but there was an old truck. It was so rusted out. And there were some poor people, Caucasian man and his, I don't know what she was, but they were together. And they came and asked, could we have that truck? Because they go to the junkyard. If they got $4 out of that, they got 5000 There was nothing there. It was here when we purchased this land. Now we will hit the black top of here. But all of this, you see that, my friend? Place. We got a, we got roads all, uh, a road all the way around this park. All of this, we have land located in a, another place that we purchase. You can't beat land. We're not far from the gold mine, and they're buying up everything around us. They're taking it because there's gold. Isn't that beautiful, my friends? Just be honest, look at that. All of that beautiful land. It's just beautiful. I used to come with the children, we would walk the land in the, in the fall or the winter, winter time of the year. They see all these are our trees. I want to take them all out and make that a fill of grain I'm going to pull over on the side here to show you some things. 
you that may have not seen this part of our community, and you're going to see much more than that. I'm just here today. I said I wanted to do a video, and I'm going to do one. I bought that. I'm going to get off. I did not bring my cane, so I'm not going to be walking much. Uh, this is a beautiful piece of land. This is when my Isha and I came here and started this. You see that sign? Teshua community, Hebrew Yisra'ali community, since 1996. We came here, she and I, with nothing. It's not that many people live on the road, but see, look down this road here. And all this is the visual of our land. All of this. We own all of this. And it doesn't begin there. I just put the sign there so people would see. It begins here on the stake here. Really nothing has changed since we've been here. A few mobile homes pulled in. That's where it begins on that white stake. I've tried to get this land. I've looked into it, but the man died and his brother lives in that house. They're not going to sell it. Land is a valuable commodity, my friends. Buy the land. And these groups, if you buy land for the people, you do it righteously. You have it whereby the land belongs to them. And you will not lord over the land, but that you will do righteous by them. And you let no one, if they don't want to be a part of it, you let no one leave broke. There should always be enough funds that if they leave, they can go, you give them a vehicle, and uh, even folks that didn't even have vehicles when they came here, I gave them cars and trucks and all. I did, my friends. Because I don't want you around me. You don't want to be around. You think I want to be around you. Not me. Look at this. These are some beautiful trees. This is what the trees look like down in the water. You hear all those? Hear the noise? You get every kind of sound here. Birds of all time. Put my... Up in here, I got my pistol because you don't know what you may run, what friend you may run into. Bobcat. Fox. But these are beautiful trees. That's where our property line... Let me show you that. Our property line is here. See those markers on the tree? That's a lot of firewood right there. And all these trees. The sounds are so beautiful. Look at those tremendous trees down there. There's a road that go, goes all the way around this property. You hear that? And the creek runs through at the end down there. We can shut people off from coming on our property, but the creek we can't. I guarantee you they could have boats to get through that creek because they fish there. They will come. I can't even imagine the amount of herbs you can find up in here. Even in the community, there was uh, an herbalist and his wife, they lived here one time. They found 320 yarrow everything 320 different herbs here on these grounds 
yellow yarrow and all that grows by the creek. Scuffadines, muscadines, food to eat. Some of everything here. Some of everything. Look at this. See, this road goes all the way down to that spot I showed you. All the way down. Just give you a simple view of it. It goes all the way down. There'll be someone right and say, well, you can make money off those trees. Oh, now you think that you know more than I do when it comes to things like that. Come on. I have a friend. I want to show you this. 1996. Uh, I've been here. What is that? 96 to 2006? 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 22, 23, 27 years I've been here. And I did not have to give it up things. All I had was a house payment and car note. I gave it all back. Sold my house to my cousin. I'm a veteran. I'm a Vietnam era vet. Only thing they had to do was take the payments out. And then when I sold it, they didn't even have enough money to pay me. So I said to them, you pay me. And I never troubled them about the money. Never ask. Never call or anything. And it took, I don't know, it took over a year something <laughs> for them to come up with the rest, the monies. It took that. I did not even, I didn't even call them one time. That was something I wasn't going to do. Her father, my father, brothers. Her mother and my mother, sisters. I did not trouble her because I wasn't going to stay there. Brand new neighborhood, they were just building the homes. I couldn't afford to live there now, no way. The houses over there are quite expensive. Well, you could have saved it and made some money and rented it out. That's silly. People that rent from others tend not to take care of things. I wasn't going back to Charlotte, period, to live. Things mean, things mean nothing to me. I don't care about cars and none of that. Isn't that beautiful? Just look at it. I'm going to give you another view. Living somewhere like that. Nobody coming up on you. I've never had any problem with no one around here. I've been here 26 years. From the most racist of races. They meet this preacher, they like it. Because I don't play with no one. No one. I don't tell jokes. I don't laugh. When I say that, certainly I laugh, but I don't gather here in groups and we just laughing and jobbing and shuck bucking. That's not my style. I've never been like that. Even when I was young, I wasn't like that. This is one beautiful place. Wealthy man lives over there. I would say he's not rich, but he's wealthy. 
back one. That's where he goes. But this is our property here. This is Teshua. We have another piece of property. I haven't been over this in a year. I need to go this year and check on it. I let the man next door use it for his his horses. He can train them on it. And she tried, his wife, you want to sell this? No, ma'am, it's not mine to sell. I can't sell that. Creek is in everything, you hear them. What a place of great shalom. It is wonderful. This is quite long, going up the hill. Let me just, this is the view. I very seldom could go out this way, I go up the other way. The Akim always go out this way. This is what you have here. This here. Very serene. Very beautiful. Very comforting. But you come home. You can ride up but it's cold. You get snow every now and then. It's beautiful. Then you arrive here at Teshua. Hebraic community. Yes, sir. You see our cows over there. Uh, that's what I got to let you see. Let me take you. There. You haven't seen. We had at one time about seventy, about eighty-five. 90 cows. We, I know we've had that in at one time. But cows are difficult. And we'll butcher one probably the fall of the year. I'm going to pull up right here. We have nice cows. Matter of fact, they are the Angus, Black Angus cows. We've had every, we've had, we've milked cows and all of that. We've done it on. All right, let's go. But this is one of, one of our little trucks that we use. Our business. Takinya Ramaya Yusipia Wasadal at Am. Here are the cows here. These are black ingots. You can hear the old bulls. These are cows. We gotta get them off this pasture and get them on the other one. Let me make them larger for you. These are Angus cows. That's them. We just sold uh, probably 10 recently, some time back. So we have cows and everything. We have everything we need here. We're not beggars. And we don't beg nobody for nothing, for money or anything. We don't beg no money. And we have found favor with this community. These are cows here. All right, I'm not gonna mess with the heifers, okay? 
This is where we do all our business on this side. Lock splitters and everything. Split all our wood for the community. This is a beautiful place. All right. We keep going out of here, they would say. Mr. Cows. I'm going to sit and talk a little bit. We get back to the community. Stretch it out a little bit. This is our simple lifestyle. No one grow, goes hungry. hungry. What do you ever buy meat? Oh, yes. Jakinja Ramayan, my issue. Ah, uh, let me get this. Let me fix this. They're going out today to purchase things. Matter of fact, I... I want to get some... Some of those Angus beef ribs, they're expensive. You get a better look at them now. They, they think they're gonna get something to eat. Quite delicious. When we, I'm quite sure we got some. We have a huge freezer, walk-in freezer. We got some of everything in that thing. We make our own chicken burgers. Ah, oh, don't tell me you can't eat chicken. You silly. You got those that say that uh, the chicken was produced by what they call the hoopie or hoopie birds. Now, and I know they haven't done any research on it. This is the kind of stuff people promote. And people that are ignorant buy it. I don't buy it. I'm like, how did that bird breed with a buzzard? People are dumb and ignorant. They buy anything. Don't eat chicken. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I prefer raising our own. We know how we raise them. Isn't this beautiful? Right? Come into a beautiful place right there. And don't forget the speed limit. When it comes to the speed limit in here, I don't play with no one, not even myself, no one. I can see everything that comes in here, everything. Five miles an hour, that's what we mean. Our children play here, our goats are here. So we're not allowing anyone to come in and disrupt our community, no one, I don't do it. And certainly not you. Welcome, John's people. But I know how we as a people, how people of my view, and five folks as well, how arrogant and ignorant we be. You will not come here and exhort that kind of arrogance. Not me. I won't allow it. I won't allow you to do it because I don't do it. No one. Isn't this beautiful? It's a beautiful place. Next video, I want to show you another home that is on the... Maggie Shaw names all these houses. It's called the House on the Park. The lake, what she calls it. Beautiful home. Everything is just beautiful in the I'm not bringing any one here. Children, un they're not under control.
disrespect for your child will not come here with you. You train them up and in the way that they should go. When they grow up and become older, they will not depart from that. You got two young daughters will graduate this year, next year. That's gonna be their home. That will be their home there. They're already working on it, getting it ready for that time. Mm -hmm. I believe in the young men and women, when they get a certain age, they begin to take on the responsibility of not living away from the parents, but living as adults. I've always done that here. The young women grow up together and learn to love each other. That's a nice old car right there, isn't it? And care for each other. To be at shalom with each other. And the young men. We will have our young men out of the home at 15, but 16 for sure. Grow up understanding responsibilities. have them out of the homes. And no one's ever given us any complications, given me any complication with that. No one. And so the young daughters will grow up with each other, learn friendship with each other and care. That's what they would do. And they would grow together and establish friendships. Young man at 13, he's a man. He's a man giant. That's just a fact of the matter. Back home. Back to tissue. Uh, <laughs> they show love flowers, all the love flowers. and Simple little house simple. 1500 dollars what, what can you do in a $500,000 house? I can't do it. All they're going to do is eat, sleep, and take care of the necessities. I can do it all here. My bedroom is 10 by 10. That's small. Not for bed. We sleep well. And this is what y'all granted unto us. I'm going to talk for 10 minutes. Take me a seat under. Where should I sit? I'm going to sit here. Beautiful place. I kid you not. You don't, you don't even understand the elements of this place unless you visit it. You visit, you will I'm going to sit here for a minute. Ah, this is beautiful here. I can see everything. I sit around and children play and hear the pond. We're in the midst of Tabernacle here. I know you will say, well, you're hot in the world. Well, I'm going to begin another series on that show you. Because you're absolutely keeping it wrong. Your leaders... They are caught up in the system, this Jewish paradigm, the Hebrew Israelites and all, that they will not negate that. The only people or religious group that keep their holidays according to time, that was the diction of the Quran or any book, is the Muslims. The Ramadan is in every season. Because they utilize the solar, the lunar calendar. And that's what Yah gave us. He did not give us a lunar solar. He gave us a solar day. And how do you interwine this, the equinox? That's insane. It is so pagan and wicked. And their arrogance will not allow them to change. I say this to any man, anyone. I want to begin teaching on that this week and until all during the time of your feast days. 
I challenge anyone, I challenge your scholars or anyone to show me any place in Tehran where there, that is the legitimate order of keeping the feast days. They're full of lies and corruption. I say this to you. I say this to the nation. There is only one way you're going to keep the feast days. Let's take the 1st of April for your observation. April, say 14th, you keep Pesach. And next year will be in April 7th. And on and on. All I want to say is this. Either you're going to keep Pesach from Pesach. It's going to be 253 days from 2021 Pesach to 2022. It's either going to be 354 days the next year. And it's going to be 355 days. And then when the cycle began again, it will be 383 days. Not sure. Now, how, how do we keep it doing a lunar cycle two years or three years? And then we add to that because we're looking for the equinox. I challenge any of your leaders. This is not difficult. I challenge any of them. You can tell them very few people listen to me, and that's fine. I want Yah's people to hear and to know. You're going to keep it one year, Pesach to Pesach. You're going to keep it 383 days. You're going to keep it 384 days. You're going to keep it 385 days. That's a fact. You're going to keep it from one Pesach to the other 353 days. You're going to keep it from 1 to 353. It's going to be 354. And the next one will be 355. And then you will have a year for them to get back to the spring of the year. 383, 384, 385. And you that, I, I, I can never, someone that knows of a website, I've searched for years. I'm trying to find the Hanukkah order of the Mo'adim. Every site I've found, you can't hardly read it. Every kind of color in the book. No explaining how they determine that. Even with the Epanic of the four days. Add them all up together. Tell me what you get. And divide them by 364 days. You don't even get that. I had this immature person told me that's why the 383. And, and, and they've seen this star. And they look for that. That's, there's only one Kuchab we look for. And that's the star of the light of Yahshua Hamashiach. You can't even see. I said to one, you don't even see. When I moved here 27 years ago, the heavens were gleaming with stars. We could sit out and watch them. And in these last 25, in the last, I would say, 15 years, you can't hardly see a star at times because of the pollution and all of that. So you're not going to tell me that you know the name of a star that is not even mentioned in Torah, and that is what substantiates these lies. These are liars, nation. They are corrupt men and women. They lie to you because they don't give a nickel's worth of rat's food for you. Anytime anyone can tell you a lie that is that blatant, bold, and brazen, I will tell you the truth. Am I ignorant? I'm as ignorant as you are. But I am a student of this walk. Preaching in ignorance over 40 some years, nearly 45 years. And could recognize my ills and my faults. That was one thing that Yah granted me. That when truth was revealed to me, I didn't fight. When Shabbat, y'all began to deal with me concerning that instead of the first day, I immediately began to teach that to show the people to keep the Shabbat, his dietary laws and all of that, his name. 
And I learned of his name over 40, I would say about 40, probably 47 years ago from a church of God in Christ preacher. He didn't teach in the name of Yah. And when I moved here, Yah began to deal with me concerning his name. And I began to preach in his name after a period of time. Ignorant as they come still is. I don't have that kind of inner pride that someone shows me that I will not repent. But I want any of you or your leaders, you that think you are scholars, to show me. I had one from Missouri say, well, they came out in the first month. Well, the first month has always had its position. And the days of Noach, the second, the seventh month, when the up rusted nothing has changed God has not changed his months you may give them names but it's still the same and man has the ability he has had the ability to keep up with quite a few things and yet you can measure time any way you want to January has nothing to do with the first month of Yah February the second nothing we count this month one, two. We don't use the names of Bobel, of Babylon, and all those names that you can find. Tish, and all of that in Torah. There's not one man, and I challenge any of you all, that labors in this book with the time that y'all grants me to do it. I labor in this book. I got tens of thousands of teachings. Nearly 100,000 teachings. I put together teachings all the time. Yesterday after the Shabbat. I do, my friends. And very seldom teach them. Because there is something new and something that is open to my eyes by one word at a time. I don't get teachings from a verse. I may use that verse, but I examine each word and see its position in Torah and what it expresses. That's not how we do it. I say to you that are Hebrew Israelites, your leaders, your must get land. I don't know. Your is amazing that you all are always prophesying that we are at the end. And you live in these nasty, wretched hell holes of, holes of cities. The New Yorks. I, I'm not apologizing. You're not even making it. As the old ones would say from paycheck to paycheck. Difficult. Little tiny places you live. Stacked. On top of each other. Now we have freedom here. Ah oh, my friend. We can. We can. Come out here and sit down. We can do all kinds of things. Children can play. And you can fish. And all kinds of ponds. If an ignorant man like me, by the gardens of Haruach, swimming pool for our children, daughters are a beautiful place for their fellowship. Oh, the men go in there as well, but it's for the daughters. Beautiful place of quietness you can come. You just listen to the water and watch the fish. Tabernacle open, never has been locked. No lock on it. Beautiful place. And the whole community is that way. The whole community is beautiful. The whole community is this way. Not just what I've shown you on camera. You saw the great fellowship that they had, what, two weeks ago? Beautiful place. And this is how we're going to live. No other way. This is it. You all get out of those cities and get together, love each other. Rent a big old house and put five families in there. I did it. I rented a house I'm going to close with this from a, um, I would not say wealthy white woman, but she 
She had her means. And I will tell you what I had, the family. I had three sisters and a mother and all their youngins. And the first place I rented for them, many of y'all are too young to remember Jesse Ham, the senator of North Carolina. I rented that from his brother in that neighborhood. And now that neighborhood is worth money now. That's where we bought the assembly. And I said to one the other day, if I'd, we had had the monies, kept that building, rented it out, it would be worth minimum 1.3 to about $2.1 million. It is urbanized. It's near the university, Johnson C. Smith University. And the development around that, even in that neighborhood, they're coming and buying all the houses and they're taking just a simple little house and they're turning it into something that is monstrophicus, three stories high and all. You don't have to in Charlotte, North Carolina, these southern states, as far as the laws and what rules on a piece of property like that. You can take that piece of property. You don't have to have electrical inspection or get it, none of that. It's grandfathered in. And that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. And I put that family in the house, all three sisters, one, two, three, all their children and the mother. But I organized it. I set that house up, the beds. I went in there and I did it all, built them a playground. I did that. And they all turned against me. All on welfare. I got them off welfare. Got them jobs. Listen to me. Whatever kind of work you want to do, you apply for that. You're not going to get a doctor's job, but you go. They had no sense of even their worth. But he was a man that drove that into them. Didn't try to sleep. I wouldn't have slept with any of them. And if I was a wicked man, I could have. So the woman says to me, this house was biggest, two stories. I say, I will do the remodeling in the house. And when they leave, it will be better looking than what it was before they moved there. Well, Jesse Ham's brother, the woman said, she called me when they were Can I just go look at the house where they live? I say, ma'am, you certainly can. Because it was one thing that I drove into them. You keep it clean at all time. I will make the children, I will walk up and down the street, pick the paper up. Clean up the street. Just go up and down, get it. And people would see that and they would do the same thing. We are an ignorant people, we are. And when he saw that, when she came and she saw that, she called me and said to me, Ria Dewit. They are really clean people. Well, they were not like that before they met me. I don't like nasty women. Nasty houses. You're nasty with the house. You're nasty with everything else. Your body and more. You can say what you want to. If a woman's high house, I can, it's in between untidy and nasty. Dishes in the sink and trash in the house. That's filth. Period. And she said to me, preaching. I rent it to you. For how much? When she gave me the price, I told her, this is what I'll pay you. And she agreed. And, and I went in there. I did the work basically by myself. And that's the honest truth. Fixed that place up. Worked on it. And moved them all in. Created other bedrooms. Built beds and all of that. I'm not like these dirty dogs out here. I don't steal. I don't rob. And I don't play with no other man's wife. I got one that I love playing with. I don't sit around and chit chat with the daughters of Tizayon. And they're not gonna come around me naked either. Our women dress very appropriately here. No pants, no shorts, the men either. Button your collar up on your shirt, man. That's the way I live. And I love my little simple lifestyle. Ah, uh, this is my monster here.
The big man here is Wasadak, my captain. I know that you no use if you're trying to evade me because I'm coming for you. You can get around me, but you can't get away from me. This is my captain here. This is Wasadak. Shalom, shalom. All right, that's my big man. That's my captain. He's a master. And I love him like my his father lives here. We're going to sign off with that, with your Wasadak telling us to... Shalom. Yabaruk. Yabaruk and have a great day. Ha hallelujah. All right, I turn this over to his hand. Yabaruk Nation. Shalom. Yabaruk. Shalom. All right. Mm -hmm.